We come alive when the sun comes down. I'll be sipping on the Henny tonight. Mm. A freaking girl gotta slap that when she doing it right. I'm not here for long, only for the vibes. Let's have a good time. Mm. Baby, I'm not here for love. Jump into conclusion. I'll be sipping on um. the Henny tonight. We've always done everything together. Um, our parents raised us that way. Um, so it's one of those where it's like he he was. I I started producing first. Um, as as things were going by, I would like obviously like play some stuff to him, and he'd play what he would be doing to me, and then it just came about where we were like. Let's try and make a song together and see how it works. Or we would always have like, say, I started an instrumental, and then I'd send it to him, and he'd add stuff. So we were always working together, but not working together. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna tick, tick, tick like a time bomb. Uh, I would say it's it's a mixture of several genres. So it's never based on a single thing. We try to make it as organic as we can so naturally we are fans of music first so we listen to other artists we listen to this and that um and usually it reflects into our music um ideally we would if we were to box ourselves in and say we make r&b or hip-hop or afro beats or i'm a piano um it would be it wouldn't be genuine to say that, but it would, would be the best way to describe it in a more traditional sense. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about working as a duo easily, especially with your brother, with you it's it's like there's a telepathic understanding because basically we grew up listening to the same music when we make music it's usually just the same the same experience being translated into music the worst part could be sometimes you might have an idea that's just not it (laughs) and it's hard for your your partner to like kind of tell you that it's trash without <laughs> telling you that it's trash but then always that's it's hard to say it's a bad thing because it always works out for the better because then they change it's there's two sides to a brain so it's you're not always gonna agree on the same thing uh, oh, this is <laughs> this is a tricky one. I'm gonna expose myself a bit. Uh, but see, it's sometimes like <laughs> with music, it's so weird. Like it, you'll be like in a place where, um, like for example, uh, we're gonna get into like the songs and stuff later on, right? And it's like you will literally be just chilling, just listening to music. And you're just like dancing, you feel good and you feel, or you feel sad, whatever feeling is coming about, right? And you're like, let me translate this. And then when you start seeing it like building up, you're like, oh shit, what was going on in my head is now translating to something that someone else can listen to and they can be like, oh shit, this, oh wait, can I swear? Yeah, yeah, don't worry, (laughs) we we all about expression. They're like, oh no, oh snap. (laughs) <laughs> um, you've got you've got this guy in another part of the world, and he's feeling how I'm feeling. And when you get like people saying, "Oh, I love this song," you're like, "How I felt? I'm glad you felt that." And it's like the feeling of translating how you feel and expressed it in the song is is the best thing. It's like just watching the impact is, is amazing. La, la, la. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the meaning of the name came from our last name. Uh, our last name, Dube, actually means zebra, if it's to be translated directly. So yeah, we kind of thought it would be creative of us to use, as we call it in Shonam Dubo. 
and we can turn it into like our name, what we stand for. <laughs> at the point, at the point when we started that song, we were coming from Cape Town to Harare, so there was kind of a, a theme of Kumba Kwebe, like, going home. So I guess that was kind of the, the thought process behind the naming of the song. The creation of the song came sp very spontaneously, <laughs> like very spontaneously, just another day of working on beats, try to like make a beat a day. And then this one kind of came and it was sounding like, <laughs> right, like current, the current feel of what really we wanted to produce, like something with more energy or something that still sounded like us. And it ticked all the boxes. Um, yeah, it was more the artist doing his thing. It really didn't take as long as some of the other songs we've released, but it, it it took, it still had the impact from the get go. Like we kind of knew, like okay, no, 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 we have something here from the start of it, from the inception. So there wasn't really a time frame given to finishing it. It was more whenever it's ready, let it hit the street. And what's your what's your typical you know work process like if you if you start if you start by an idea do you just work on that one song at a time or do you sometimes jump from one song to another song and then come back to this other song or is it like you just laser the focus I want to finish this song and then jump to the next song? That's I think one of our biggest. Some people say it's it's a good thing creatively to be able to make as much as you can. But I'm starting to learn that it's not because we we do a lot of jumping. It's very static. Like there's not ever a time where it's like, okay, for the next two weeks, I'm going to sit and we're gonna work on this song until it's done. Because it ends up being repetitive. Because you have to understand if you are the creator of the song, the lyrics, and you're doing the production, yeah. and you're gonna mix it, and you're gonna master it. It's like yeah. it gets repetitive. Yeah. You have yeah. song like yeah. over and over time. By yeah. the time it's like time to release it, you don't even like this song. <laughs> yeah. You're like, thank God this is out. But yeah. yeah. To be fair, I understand that, man. Like when we edit videos, it's like an hour long video that you see every day for three weeks. Right. By the time it comes out, you're a madman. But, yeah. you're, you're so done with it. Dude, you're doing you're seeing the same thing, you're everything. doing all the cuts. Yeah. And then there's another thing. Then whenever you speak to writers, they always talk about you know, writer's block where sometimes you want to, you you purposely want to have ideas, you want to create something, but it's just a block in your mind, like ideas that are coming. Do you ever go through that sort of process? Uh definitely. Definitely there's times where it's like, yo, I need to write, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you making a yeah, yeah. Ass. <laughs> It's hilarious. It's, it's funny. You be like, I need to write. And then you take your book out, right? You look at it. Sometimes for me, you, you, I don't know. I, I like things that make me more creative. So you get a bottle um, of wine, maybe. You sit down and you're ready to start a day of creation. You look at your pad and your pen and you're like, or really what you write, sometimes you don't have confidence in it. Like you read it and you're like, all right, this is good. But then there's a lot of comparing to your previous work. And then you're like, yo, 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 yo. Like I'm setting my bar lower. So yeah, writer's block is definitely a thing. There's no, there's no way of running away from it. You just have to live through it. And then as a sort of like, how would you say, I don't know if I'm putting you on the spot here, how would you say most of your music is sort of like, how does it come about? Is it stuff where you're doing something else, you get this inspiration, you stop what you're doing and you start working on the song, or is it more of like when you sit down and you purposefully work on this project? Uh, yeah, it's very random. It's <laughs> very random. Like sometimes you'll be, he... <laughs> okay, you can expose me if I try it. So he... He could really write a whole song on the toilet. Yeah. A whole song on the toilet. Like literally, 
sit and just listen to the bounce. Yeah. And by the time he's done shitting, <laughs> there is a hit record. <laughs> just chilling, wait. But that's oh, the thing. Oh, in the shower. Why didn't you just say in the shower? Oh, oh, I, I, the I shower mean, is a great place. See, I mean, yeah, 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 place yeah, right you here, can say in the shower to save yourself. <laughs> That's fair, that's fair. But yeah, in, in the most random of times, you just do whatever. And you have to record it right there and then. Because yeah. if you lose it's, the initial feeling and inspiration, it's wraps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Right. So that's it. Anything more great, right? Oh, so now I'm taking the last seat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay, welcome to the breakdown. So this is a song called Kumba Kwedu. We released it early this year. Let's get into it. Okay, to start off, that's a normal Brazil Brazilian funk loop I found on YouTube. Just chopped it in the middle, slowed it down, um, and tried to make sure it's a perfect, like slow down loop this is it over here slow down and in the beat all right up next is a guitar loop it's actually one of the stock logic guitar loops so basically what i did was slow it down again and pitch shift it Yeah, so basically now you can kind of feel, you can see where the vibe is going. It feels comfortable, it feels like you already have the tempo. So you think, well, I like to think of the next things to build. I start with drums most of the time, so this loop is kind of good enough. Um, and then we jump straight into keys, which is the body. We'll start with the roads and then we'll add a pad on top of that. Alright, just for some flavor, it needed a little sum sum, so this world it's a kinda did some stabs that felt good. Next is my favorite part, personally, <laughs> the drums. We love the drums. We we just love, we love drums. I think maybe it's in my blood as a black man. But yeah, here are the drums. And this is them with the loop. All right, so next, um, I laid down an 808 and also layered that with a normal bass, a thumb bass. Uh, it's actually MIDI, but here it is.
At this point, everything is coming together. Run the drums. So yeah, I think after this, I bounced it and I was happy with the bounce, but then after listening to the intro a few times, it's like there was something that was needed to really kick it off. And the horns, the horns, man. So here they are. Alright, in between the verses, it needed some spice. I was really trying to get deep into my saxophone back to make it sound as live as possible, so here it is. Okay, for the vocals, I mean, really what we did mostly was just try to emphasize the lead vocal more with small, small things. <laughs> it's just spices, so like pitching down the voices and pitching up some, it really makes a difference. It makes your vocals pop. Don't do yeah. too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. I might fall in love. In love, la 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 la. When you see me, babe, don't. Eh, oh, eh, my day. Saka wai de o dambi sangu o chindi shandi sa. Eh, ndati eh, oh, eh, my day. Saka wai de o dambi sangu o chindi shandi sa. Shorty hold me down like a shoestring Shorty hold me down, my mood change But you been banging like Hussein Got me begging like loose change What do you say? Things I do for love Girl, it's not enough So yeah, that was Kumba Kwedu Really, really enjoyed making this song, man It's a vibe Thank you very much for watching Everyone stay safe Peace and love Enjoy your lives Bye Thank you.